In today's session, we will talk about the bridge rehabilitation. Uh, this is the second webinar for the bridge evaluation training series. Uh, in the first session, we went over the uh, brief introduction to bridge load rating. We saw some of the functions in Maida Civil, as well as uh, what was uh, bridge load rating and how it can be performed in the program. Today, we're going to go over what is the uh, uh, rehabilitation of bridges. Uh, we're going to touch uh, some of the reasons for the bridge deterioration and we will uh, talk about specifically reinforced concrete bridges uh, or concrete bridges as a whole uh, and uh, steel bridges as well. Then we will show some modeling approaches that can be used in the program as well as uh, different functions that can be used in order to simulate the uh, current state of bridges and uh, also the different uh, uh, functions that we can use to uh, simulate uh, different modeling approaches as well. For those of you who do not uh, know what Maida Civil is, Maya Civil is an all-in-one solution. Uh, we call it all-in-one because you can perform the analysis and design of any type of bridge, as well as different types of analysis required as per different uh, standards. Uh, you can do steel plate girder bridges, precast girders, uh, slab bridge, the basic uh, type of bridges, as well as more advanced types such as uh, suspension bridges or cable state ones. Uh, you can also perform the analysis of um, segmental bridges as well as pusher analysis, sta uh, construction stage analysis. You can also do uh, response spectrum and linear dynamic analysis. As you see, uh, the program can perform any type of analysis for any type of bridges. Now going into specifically the bridge rehabilitation. So what is bridge rehabilitation? Uh, rehabilitation, as, as per the word, it means to restore, to make uh, suitable, to put back in good conditions, to reestablish uh, on a firm, sound basis, to bring back to the full use, to reinstate, to renew, and to revive. Uh, in bridges, rehabilitation concerns mostly on the whole bridge structure, including its primary structural members. Its content uh, also covers uh, many technical and economical problems related to the different bridge works performed uh, to improve the technical condition and functional features of the structure. It also covers uh, many complex engineering problems as well as economical ones. And as uh, you've probably seen uh, in, in the few recent years, Many modern rehabilitation methods and non-conventional material solutions have been used uh, to improve the durability of bridges that have been uh, de uh, developed. In today's session, we will cover uh, what goes before the rehabilitation as well as what's uh, during the evaluation process and the possible reasons that uh, that this uh, deterioration happens to the bridges. Then we will cover some functions that we can use in the program to perform this type of um, analysis or evaluation. Talking about the reinforced concrete first, uh, the process of evaluation has a ma the main objectives, which uh, is to evaluate and to prove the functionality and safety of the structure. The first step is to study the available information of the structure. What do we have? Do we have any floor plans? Do we have um, the, the different data of the bridge itself that we can probably use as a reference uh, when we go and do uh, a possible visual inspection? Uh, after that, uh, we visit the site to confirm the structure uh, typo typology and also the its conservation states, how damaged it is, uh, or, or whether it is what is written in the floor plans or not. We, we can, from there, from the visual uh, inspection, we can compare whether or not you know, the is it's complied with the floor plans, the structure. If the project information is not available, then it is necessary to collect the basic site information to prove uh, 
the current situation of the bridge. Uh, in the case of bridges with foundation problems, uh, we will also need um, a geotechnical study to identify the possible causes of the damage in the foundation. After we go over the first steps, then we go into th what is called a visual inspection. Uh, the inspection visits constitute the base of the diagnostic and determination of the current state of the structure. It is uh, also useful to confirm the information of the original project and know if any repairs, modifications have been made to the structure. Also the objective of the site reconnaissance is to follow uh, to obtain the bridge geometry and confirm the project data if the project data is available. Also to confirm and recognize the general structural schemes, whether the supports are okay, the joints, see what the, if there is any damage on them, uh, see if the information that we have from the bridge compared to the what we see on the bridge is uh, it compares or is very different we also use it to determine the general state of the bridge uh, if there is any stains, if there is any corrosion, if there is uh, we can scale the damage uh, and, and also its magnitude we can also see from the uh, visual inspection the foundation state you know if there is any movement on the foundation uh, on the soil if there is any issues with it we can from the visual inspection uh, to some type of um, estimate of any damage. Also another objective of the visual inspection is to analyze the existence of a shallow foundation or shallow defects such as uh, stains, efflorescence, leaks, invasions from the vege vegetation and so on. Also to determine the state of the deck's drainage system. Uh, sometimes, you know, the drainage can uh, affect uh, the deck's behavior. So it is very important to know whether the bridge can drain the uh, adequately. Also, another objective of the visual inspection is to prove the existence of crackings or, or fissures in the bridge elements. Uh, you can from there estimate crack widths. You can see whether or not there is, you know, an issue with the with the bridge just by looking at it. You can easily see the cracks, and then from there you can decide how you can simulate this behavior in a structural pro program like Mida Civil. Another another objective of the uh, visual inspection is to detect the presence of carbonation in the structure or corrosion in the reinforcement. You can from there estimate the cover, the permeability of the concrete, and that can actually give you a, a pretty good idea of how the bridge is behaving with the, you know, the outside elements such as weather and so on. Also from the visual inspection you can detect the excessive deformations and identify the state of the support devices where you have uh, bearings or you know the different supports that we have mentioned in the previous sessions for the substructure uh, webinars. Uh, you can from there estimate whether or not they are behaving properly or they have any damage and if that damage can be uh, or that element can be replaced. Then, uh, after you do the visual inspection, you have to take into consideration some of the causes of these problems. The causes of uh, the uh, deterioration in um, re uh, concrete bridges can be generated due to emissions in the project phase or construction phase or in service due to or due to accidental action or simply just due to the lack of maintenance which is a very very big issue uh, nowadays let's see so during a, a bridge lifespan you know you have seismic actions you have extraordinary uh, situations such as avenues impacts on the bridge that can ca cause damage if the structure is periodically revised or, or, or inspected 
uh, and the the necessary repairs are made, it will it will be a, the the structure will be in better shape uh, to confront any possible situation that could happen. But if you know there is no proper maintenance on the bridge, then we we can you know reduce its lifespan, and that can really affect uh, money wise and also in the transportation. Here are some of the most relevant uh, causes of deterioration in the concrete bridges. Uh, one big issue is the extension of a new ledger of uh, asphaltic agglomerate on the deck. You know, as we put more asphalt on the deck, the permanent load increases. Uh, we can obtain also the obturation. Uh, that can affect the drainage system on the bridge. So these are some of the well main issues or most relevant that we can usually see when we do a bridge inspection. Uh, another thing that can affect the or can may uh, cause deterioration is the variation of the traffic conditions. You know, a high volume of traffic or then vo low volume of traffic, different trucks passing through the bridge can really affect the its conditions. Also the extension of salt using the uh, uh, for the ice it can really damage the deck. Uh, when we have you know a lot of heavy snow and then the trucks come in uh, that salt that we add to the to the deck really damages. We also have another issue which is uh, the visual cracks and deformations in the bridge and the pretensioned uh, uh, pre elements. Uh, those cracks and deformations can really affect the, the bridge and also the long-term effects on the pre-stressed elements uh, can actually deform the bridge and affect this uh, safety and structural components. Now going into uh, steel bridges, the visual inspection uh, is done to detect um, deterioration due to corrosion, uh, loss of material. As you might know, steel bridges, they are very highly impacted by weather conditions and corrosion can really affect uh, sections and uh, actually lose some material. That loss of material has to be taken into consideration for the uh, analysis of the bridge and determining whether or not it is safe or not. Uh, also to determine the state of the foundation. As you know the foundation is what supports the structure on top of the soil so that has to be very well taken into consideration as we mentioned in previous webinars and those uh, can be taken from a simple visual inspection uh, whether or not the bridge is uh, foundation is functioning properly or if there is any issue of the bridge without even doing an excavation you have an idea you can have an idea of what is happening also uh, the visual inspection is to uh, allow decision making with respect to the safety of the structure immediately you know if you have a very damaged bridge you can then just uh, provide some closures so you can do more detailed analysis or just to you know make a, a plan to see how you can uh, rehabilitate it uh, in many bridges uh, steel specifically Many many elements are connected with the uh, bolts, uh, which is necessary to evaluate the state of the bolts, uh, whether or not they're acting correctly or behaving correctly. Uh, you can do that through visual inspections of the of the bridge, and by going to the side and just looking at you know how the bolts are, whether or not they are uh, behaving properly. The causes of deterioration for steel bridges. Uh, the main one is corrosion. Corrosion can uh, is the main damage and the most frequent uh, damage on steel uh, structures. Since uh, bridges are usually outdoors, 
the risk of corrosion increases and should be compensated with uh, an adequate maintenance program. Uh, major problems are found on joints, uh, hidden places where humidity and, and lack of cleanliness accelerates corrosion. Uh, protection against corrosion starts in the project phase and if it's not taken into consideration it will really affect the behavior of the bridge and its structural uh, components. Um, the protection against corrosion uh, should be done since day one and you know protection and evacuation of water should be fixed and should be evaluated since the beginning of the project. Other possible actions to be taken into consideration is the loads, the loads produced other than the service loads, such as the accumulation of dead loads, as we mentioned, if we increase the deck um, uh, uh, width or if we increase the deck loading, that can really affect the behavior of, and that is a very common thing, you know. Sometimes you have deformations on the bridge that, you know, an engineer might think just by adding asphalt to it, it's just easier to, you know, level it up. But in the long term, it can really affect the structural components of the bridge by generating higher deformations and just by you increasing the load of it. Reasons for the bridge deterioration, besides the ones that we mentioned for steel and concrete, uh, increasing traffic flows, weight of vehicles, especially their axle loads, compared to the period when the bridges have been designed and construction, constructed. As you know, many 20 years ago or 30 years ago, we were not using the same the same trucks that we're using now. Uh, also, the different states are changing their vehicles, so the increase in, in traffic flow or, or the loading on the bridges really impacts their behavior, short and long term. Also, another cause of deterioration is the influence on the, of the environment pollution, especially the atmospheric ones, on the performance of the structural materials. As uh, you might know, the particles in the environment can affect the behavior of the steel and the concrete, whether it's making a corrosion or just making a chemical um, reaction with the concrete, let's say, it, it really can influence on the behavior of those or performance of the structural materials. Also the de-icing agents, as I mentioned, in countries with moderate climates, United States, for example, uh, those chemicals can or elements can really affect the behavior of the bridge. Also, we have the low quality of the structural materials that are used for the uh, construction of the bridge, as well as the bridge equipment elements, such as the expansion joint, the waterproofing membranes. Um, the um, bearing elements and so on. If we have low quality materials, we're going to see a deterioration very soon. Uh, bridges are designed with certain standards that should be uh, taken into consideration in order to have, you know, proper behavior of the structure as well as long uh, lifespan. If we use low quality, then we will eventually face different issues in the bridges. Uh, also, a limited maintenance program or insufficient standard of maintenance can really affect the behavior of the bridge. After a, a bridge is uh, constructed, it is a lot cheaper to just have a maintenance program than rebuilding it. So if we don't have a, 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 a good maintenance program and we follow it, then we're going to have issues um, with the bridges 20, 30 years. Also the structural materials uh, and material solutions particularly sensitive to damage uh, for both uh, traffic loads and environmental factors. So these are some of the uh, reasons why 
uh, the bridge deterioration happens so often and uh, these have to be taken into consideration when doing the evaluation of a bridge. Now going into the different modeling approaches uh, bridges come in a wide uh, range of structural arrangements such as trusses, pre-stress concrete pre-stressed composite bridge, steel girders, composite with reinforced concrete decks and so on. You also have suspension bridges, cables and you can go off on and mention 20 different type of bridges. Assessments uh, usually starts with the linear elastic analysis to evaluate the load carrying capacity. Something like what we did uh, a couple of weeks ago where we did different moving load analysis to evaluate how the bridge can carry that load, whether or not it it can, and then deciding from there whether a rehabilitation is needed or not. After that, uh, you can do the calculations by hand, usually, for simple bridges, but usually uh, it is it is more convenient to use a finite element software early on the earlier stages of evaluation when you typically do not know any nonlinear or if the nonlinear analysis is, will be required. Uh, this is done because it is easier for the engineer to have the base model on the earlier stage just in case you need to do a nonlinear analysis you already have the model created you don't have to switch between programs you don't have to recreate the model you just have it there just in case you need it um, for bridges for let's say in the case of my civil you can do the basic modeling uh, such as the linear elastic analysis and then if you need to perform a nonlinear dynamic and you know make a very much detailed analysis of a specific element which we will we'll look at uh, later on today you can perform it right there in the same model so you don't have to be switching around changing programs transferring loads elements and so on which can uh, make you lose a lot of time and also it can also uh, be very tedious work just by having one in the same model you can do everything there uh, for bridges with lateral soil pressures uh, such as integral bridges uh, you have to treat the soil structure interaction it is fundamental for the structural behavior and you have to pay attention to it we've seen the soil structure interaction in previous webinars you can uh, watch them in our website I'm gonna give it to you later today uh, we did a series on substructure analysis and how you can use the program and how important it is to perform this type of analysis when you have soil involved in the structure and more in uh, integral bridges for example. Now going into some of the functions in the program to simulate the behavior of um, current states of bridges for example, in Maida Civil, we mentioned before that uh, through visual inspection you can see whether there is a crack in the section, where there is loose uh, material or area on the section. Uh, in the program, we have an option where you can calculate the properties, the transforming properties reflecting the tendons and reinforcement in case you have the floor plans. Uh, you can input the reinforcement in the program uh, for pre-stress concrete composite steel and composite steel box sections uh, and you can also define the stress points uh, if you want to evaluate the model you can use the stress points to calculate or see how the bridge is behaving in different parts of the section and you can also model a crack section or just arbitrarily reduce its load carrying capacity. Its stiffness co could be reused by applying the stiffness reduction factors. Here you can see in this model that you can use, uh, or in this image, you can use the function for the section manager to uh, 
insert the scale factor for area, inertias, the weight of the section and so on. As you can see in the image, you can modify factors by changing the cross-sectional area, the shear area, the torsion moment of inertia or the weight uh, for any section at desired location and in the, the desired direction. This is a very useful uh, function because for example if you want to reduce the stiffness of a section on cracking the moment of inertia about the local y direction could be reduced by a factor. It could be assigned, this factor could be assigned into a particular boundary group as well as in case of the construction stage of uh, you know it, you can use it or a boundary change assignment you need to perform you can do that so let's say if a long term in a construction stage you want to reduce the moment of uh, of inertia of a particular section you can simulate that behavior and this might be a very basic way of you know simulating it but it can be a very accurate way of simulating uh, a crack width for example you can reduce the scale factor on, on both I and J nodes of the element and also in the case that you have a tapered section where you have two different sections of the same uh, on, on the I and the J node of an element you can uh, assign a scale factor for each one of the uh, uh, ends whether it's I or J end so let's say that you found some cracks in a uh, concrete bridge for example PSC and you want to simulate that cracking you can simply reduce let's say 0 0.7 0 0.4 of the uh, moment of inertia of that particular element and then you can see its behavior in uh, the program will give you the load that it can carry also the deformation caused by any particular load Let's just go into the model, uh, into a model to show you where you can find that function. So let's say you have a model and you want to reduce the moment of inertia. This is a very simple one, just to show you. You want to reduce the moment of inertia of, let's say, the beams of this model, or the beam elements of this model. This section has a an area or section dimensions like this one we just use the inches so let's take a look at it you have a 6 by 9 uh, beam section and you want to reduce its properties so you go into the properties tab and you go to the section manager and use the stif stiffness function so let's say you want to change the stiffness of this particular element, element 1. Here you have the scale factors. Here you can reduce the area, moment of inertia, uh, the weight of it, and you can even assign it into a boundary group. That boundary group can be used to in, during the construction stages. If you want to do a construction stage analysis, you can use those boundary groups to simulate what is happening during the construction stages or simply the long term. Uh, here you can, uh, if you want to reduce the area by half, you can simply put 0.5 and the program will reduce its area. Same for the moment of inertia, you can do that and reduce it you know, as much as you would like to just to see behavior uh, of the bridge. You can then copy that scale factor into the different models using this function, copy scale factor, very simple and from there you can simulate what will be the reduction of uh, the moment of inertia for example due to the crack width. We also have a function and a very useful one in the program. If for example from the visual inspection you don't really get uh, much of the bridge then uh, you find that it's necessary to do some uh, test, site test, such as you know, taking a core of the concrete and testing it to see what its modulus of elasticity or its compressive strength is. Uh, you can also do uh, analysis 
to see whether the there is corrosion on the reinforcement. We have an option in the program where you can define isotropic or orthotropic material properties uh, by you. So we have uh, the user defined material in which you can define the modulus of elasticity, the thermal coefficient, the Poisson's ratio, the weight density of the material that you're using, uh, whether and then from there you can uh, use the this function to simulate the bridge that you're analyzing. If you want to do that, you can simply just go into the same properties and here you can define the material properties. You have the user define function. Uh, we have a database for steel and concrete. In the case that you don't want to use any of those, you have the user define in which you can define the modulus of elasticity that you obtain from the uh, from the uh, test. You can do isotropic or orthotropic, and you can define there its shear modulus, uh, the modulus of elasticity, and so on. And then the program will use that material property to define the uh, or to be used in the model. Another function that we have uh, is let's say that you need to perform a more advanced analysis in the program. Uh, you know, from after you analyze and evaluate it, you you think that you need uh, to go into more detail and perform a nonlinear analysis. We have an option in the program in which you can do a fiber division of a section. You can use uh, fiber elements to model beam cross sections and approximately divide it into different cells and then from there you can assign the linear materials to it to represent the stress strain hysteresis models for concrete steel. Uh, you can then obtain the curve and see well how the 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 materials are behaving nonlinearly. Where you use the concrete, you can specify the cover of the concrete, uh, you can uh, specify the reinforcing steel and then from there you can um, obtain a stress strain uh, distribution of the bridge. Let's use this very simple model to show you. Uh, in order for you to define the nonlinear material we have an option called fiber division of a section. Here you can uh, define the different materials that you're using uh, we have different materials, uh, you can define them here. Let's say for the concrete, we're using the Japanese standard. We have different models in the program such as Canton Park uh, that we can use. Uh, Trilinear concrete model, let's check out the Canton Park. And here you can define what the behavior of the concrete in this case will be. For example, for the steel we have uh, Minigato Pinto or bilinear, trilinear park model that you can use to simulate the behavior of the steel as well, nonlinear behavior of it. Uh, after you define the steel for each one of the um, elements that we're u using, you define its properties and then from there you can tell the program what fiber or what element belongs to each part. So for the rebars, I have uh, these uh, rebar diameters, let's say is number 7. And then for the concrete, I have defined the Japanese, as I mentioned earlier, standard for the concrete behavior. Uh, you can uh, create a, a fiber or create a rebar using uh, the material ID that you have defined. And uh, you can also point it. Uh, you can tell a program where the location of the river is or you can simply use the linear distribution to tell a program from where to where and the amount of rebars that you're doing. That is another option. If you have let's say a circular shape you can also define it with the center uh, and the arch, the angle of the arches. And for the concrete you can simply just draw 
the section or bring it from the section um, uh, that you have defined in the model. After you do that, uh, you can perform or you can um, then assign the hinge properties. In order for you to assign the hinge properties, you can simply just go into the add or modify hinge properties here in this case the properties are for the nonlinear materials that we have and we can display them right here just go to assign in elastic hinge properties and here you can see what has been assigned to each element everything is in here in the inelastic properties and then from there you can perform the analysis and see what the behavior of the concrete is let's just perform the analysis of this one to check it In the case of fiber analysis, we have implemented also a time history load, which is an incremental static load, a nonlinear analysis uh, case, in which we simulate the change from zero to one of the loading, just to simulate uh, uh, how the load varies in time. And then from here, we can obtain the uh, inelastic uh, behavior of the the elements that we're checking so we go if you want after you perform the analysis you just go to the um, analysis result of the fiber section and then from here you can just pick the element that you want to check and uh, simply plot the graph and see you know from there how that particular element is behaving you know, if you have a case in which you want to see what the nonlinear behavior of a particular element is, you can simply use the fiber analysis in order for you to obtain the stress strain curve uh, in the um, element. You can also see what the, at each part, what the behavior, rotation, and moment. Uh, generated for the particular element and then you can even see what the the yield whether or not you have yielding tension and compression uh, whether you, or not you have yielding in the in the element or you have any crushing on the uh, element as well Here you can also see the rotation. Uh, this is an estimate of the yield strength of the fiber section. And here you can have the result, exact result with the table of the particular um, fiber. That is another way of performing the evaluation or nonlinear analysis of a particular bridge. Here you can assign the, f the fiber, the reinforcement, and the concrete that you're using. Another and very important way of using the functions in the program is to use different types of modeling. Uh, with the recent uh, wizards that we recently implemented in the program, you can see or you can use different type of elements to simulate the current states of a bridge. Let's say you have different types of modeling available. For the frames, you have uh you can do all uh, a bridge using all frame elements or all plate elements for let's say a steel composite bridge or you can do like some type of a hybrid in which you have a deck as plate and a girder as frame that is another way of performing the analysis just using just by using different types of elements you can also do deck as web and deck and web as plate and the flanges as a frame it's up to you 
but the program can give you a lot of flexibility when defining uh, these type of bridges. You can do the same bridge in multiple ways. Uh, in this case, let's say uh, here you can see the uh, steel top uh, model uh, where the uh, flanges are were using plates, an old plate, deck as plate, and weapon flanges as plate model, uh, type of section model using frame elements. And then from here, like you can model different type of elements, uh, whether it's steel or concrete, uh, and uh, and then from there you can even have multiple models of the same um, bridge. Let's just show you how you can do this in the program. Let's say you have a section uh, like this one in you want to perform a, the analysis of a pre-stress concrete bridge. We, as I mentioned before, we have different modeling approaches for the pre-stress composite bridge. Let's say if we open the wizard, we have an option in the program in which you can generate everything as a frame or do everything as a plate. It's up to you. So let's say I already have a specific uh, model done. Let's say I use this one as a base for the generation of a, a steel composite bridge. So let's say I first generated as all frame. After you define all the properties, section, the loadings, and the tendon information, and so on, you can tell the program whether or not you want to use all frame. Let's just do an all frame model just to show you. You could even save this particular information of the of the bridge using the save as function, which is what I did. And then you can just bring it to simulate the same bridge just using different elements. In this case, for example, we have everything that is uh, using frame elements. If you just take out the hidden, you're going to see something like this. Everything is uh, being generated using frame elements. Let's say I want to use the same bridge, but I want to use the deck as a plate. So in this case, I use the function for deck as plate, and then I just click OK, and the program is going to generate that uh, deck as plate for me. So here we have, in this case, we have a thickness and we can see it. This is the thickness of the deck. The program generated the deck as plate and everything else is a frame. So you can have two different approaches to simulate that behavior. In this case, you can now really see the thickness of the deck, uh, as you can see here, just a line. In order for you to change that, you go to the display option, you can go to the draw, uh, hidden option model, and just activate the thickness. From there, the program is going to show you now the thickness of it, and you can really see, you know, that it's there now. So you can see here that the program with the same model, you can use two different approaches to simulate the same bridge. Uh, here in this particular model, as I mentioned, if you want to perform a stiffness reduction factor, you can simply go into the stiffness uh, section and you can reduce the stiffness of it right here. Uh, there is an option op also for the uh, plate. In this case, that we have a plate as um, as uh, the deck, the deck as a plate. There's a function called plate stiffness scale factor in which you can also reduce the stiffness scale factor, the in-plane and out of plane for bending actual torsion uh, in it their own directions. So uh, from here you can specifically reduce the uh, capacity of the deck just in case you, you think or you've seen the crack width or you perform any other different analysis 
and you want to simulate that uh, behavior in this particular model. This is a way of performing for pre-stressed concrete. Uh, another way is by using the steel composite girder and here you can do even more approaches in for example you can simulate everything as a frame uh, deck, flange, web, everything uh, you can also do everything as a plate in which the program will do plate for the flanges, plate for the um, a deck in an eye section for example we're gonna see that, or a top section, we're gonna see that in the next model in which we mesh uh, a girder opening to just analyze it, which is called detail analysis. Uh, you can also do the deck as plate and the girder as frame. Uh, you can do the deck and web as plate and the flanges as a frame. So it's up to you uh, how you can, or how do you want to perform these types of analysis and how detailed you want to do that in the program. As I mentioned, another way of using the a program is for a specific analysis. So let's say you have anchors that you want to check or you have an opening on a girder like this one that you want to see in detail uh, you have the option in the program of just modeling a very detailed analysis as this one that I'm gonna show right now here you can see that we modeled the opening using girder elements we did the modeling of the girder using frame elements and we connected them using rigid links like this one. So this is a rigid connection between the top and bottom flange and the center of the elements uh, to the frame elements. So it's something like this. From here you can analyze in very detail this particular opening. Let's just do a static analysis of it with a specific beam load applied on top of the opening which is this one and some point loads uh, distributed uh, girder loads something like this that you can find and if you need to evaluate it the program is able to do that so let's say you have you want to see some deformations due to a particular load case uh, let's see the displacement contour of it and it's the form shape. Here you can tell, let me just take out the rigid links, here you can tell what the deformation is just by looking and you can see the deformation not only on the girders or on the plate elements but you can see it as well on the on the on the on the beam, beam elements. If you want to check the forces you can do beam diagram such as the moment diagram for a particular load uh, let me just fix the legend and do some of the change the units here uh, you can do the you can see the uh, moment generated on the on the beam elements but you can also do plate elements or plate forces and moments. If you want to see the moments on the plate, you can also say see what the moment of the plate is due to that particular load. If you want to see the shear on the plates, you can also do that. If you want to see the actual forces, if there is any applied to it, you can also see it as per unit area. So you can from here tell or, or, or obtain the stresses which are the ones for uh, unit area let's say you want to check the forces due to the place stresses here the effective stress applied due to that particular load so here you can really evaluate what the stresses of a particular elements are uh, in the bridge and on top of that you can uh, reduce the stiffness scale factor for those plates so you can reduce the the moment 
uh, capacity or the uh, the axial capacity or shear capacity of those particular elements and then from there the program will generate uh, a more detailed analysis or more accurate analysis of it. Let me just change the thickness so that you can see its real thickness. Perfect. And then from there you can tell what the uh, exact location or what is happening in a particular location. If you just want to say let me just take this part as a reference you can easily just activate that part and see what the behavior of it is. This is a very detailed and very easy uh, model to do but that is something that you need in order to you perform uh, an accurate evaluation of the current state of a bridge. And then to finish up uh, in the case that you have to perform a more advanced analysis, we have different plastic materials available that you can use you know, to perform the, these analysis. We have Tresca, Von Mises, more Column, Drucker, Prager. Um, we also have an option for masonry uh, structures. Uh, for Tresca and Von Mises, uh, you can use it for ductile materials. It is appropriate for that in which you can exhibit uh, plastic incompressibility. Uh, for more Qualum and Drucker Prager, you can use it for brittle materials such as concrete, rock, soils, and with that one you can exhibit behavior for volumetric uh, plastic strains. This is the dialog box for the uh, uh, Tresca. And in order for you to define that particular plastic material, you can do that under the uh, plastic material function and here you can tell the program we're using von Mises, Drucker, Prager, more column uh, and then from there you can define the cohesion, friction angle and so on. For mainstream you can even define the brick materials that you're using, the joint materials that you're using and how is it distributed along the um, wall in this case in case you are going to do that modeling. Uh, just in case you're going to do that modeling, you can do that. Um, as I mentioned earlier, if you want to access uh, this webinar, will be uploaded.